This webinar is proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today. Uh, so Warren's looking at indicators to determine stop loss. Um, it, 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 I was going to say a shortish, but not massively short webcast. Warren will go through slides. As always, uh, you got questions, pop them into the Q&A box. We've certainly got some time for questions at the end. Uh, but with that, Warren, all yours. Oh, thank you, Simon. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I just chose two different indicators to look at that we can use to determine stop loss areas. Um, I chose the moving averages and average true range just to give, it, give you two very different options. Um, okay, there are many ways to, to look at moving averages or stops. Uh, I'm just going to use these two today. Obviously, uh, Simon's lazy system. You can use price closing below the moving average as a stop loss for a long. And then we can use two moving averages that are crossing over to exit the trade. Now, we did say stop losses. Obviously, if I enter a trade and the moving averages then cross against me, that would be a stop loss. An example of price closing below a 15 exponential moving average. The idea is that if I want to catch a trend, I need to have moving averages. Okay, so I've got the 15 EMA. Price closes below the 15 EMA in those three circles, that just tells me that momentum is potentially changing. We generally, this is used on, you know, by traders that want shorter term trades. It allows you to catch a part of the trend, it then stops you out and it allows you to re-enter the trend. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that it, it does do is stop catastrophic loss by a really deep correction. So if we're waiting for uh, for the market to totally pull back and maybe break support. By the time that happens, uh, that's a very big loss from a profit position. So using the price closing below a moving average is a really good way to at least catch a part of the trend, stop out, enter again, catch a part of the trend, and we don't suffer the drawdowns. Uh, and we can see here, for instance, the second one stopped us panicking after those last two candles. Normally what happens, traders are stopping out, or especially uh, sort of new guys, are stopping out right at the bottom of that candle and then watching the market continue. Better to be out early and then re-enter the trade. And we can see the third trade, same idea, market pulled back quite, quite a lot deeper than our exit and we were quite happy just to watch the market do its thing. Uh, and that would be generally the idea. When it comes to two moving averages, we look at a shorter period moving average. I just applied a 21 and 50 exponential moving averages here. Uh, you're welcome to play with different sizes. Uh, the, bigger the, uh, the bigger the moving average, then the deeper the pullback before the trade would be stopped out. Uh, the idea would be the 21 average stays above the 50, we stay in the trade, 21 crosses below the 50 over there, and we're out of the trade preventing quite a large drawdown. It's often used by longer term traders, especially on the physical stocks, to close positions. So if I have a, a longer term position in there, I've been in the trade two, three years, the market suddenly starts to change personality, 21 crosses below the 50 or 50 crosses below 100, however you want to do it, that just tells me momentum has definitely changed. Okay, short term traders will use this as a trend indication. So I would be able to, to look at this and say, instead of going and buying the stock while it's falling down here, in other words, trying to pick these bottoms, uh, there are obviously strategies to do that, but I want to be trading the direction of the trend. So we can see those little red arrows. I've stopped out of the longs, I'm no longer going long, and the short trade starts to take precedence over trying to pick bottoms for the longs. 21 crosses the 50, tells me that the uptrend is change to a downtrend and I am ready to short. Now, while this volatility is based on true range, which is the difference between the high and low price in a period of time, while this volatility is commonly known as average true range and is simply the true range averaged over a period of time, 
we can see that the first setups, uh, the, the moving averages, are really simple to look at. You can look at the chart, you can see where the price is in, in comparison to its 15-day average or its 21-day average versus its 50-day average. Average true range, on the other hand, requires a little bit more effort. Uh, the default setting on the ATR is 14 periods. Uh, personally, I prefer two working weeks, so that would be 10 periods on physical shares, if, if you're going to apply average true range, or one working week, which would be a five period volatility on CFDs for shares. I have found that ATR is best applied to daily or weekly time frames. Um, I've looked at it, I've, I've tried it on intraday charts, I haven't found it to be productive enough. Uh, simply, it can make the stocks way too big for, you know, for an all Z trade or a currency trade. Right, applying ATRs on the physical side, and you can see again, we've got the moving averages in there. Average true range on shares is basically multiplied by three. So if you have a look, the orange line over there tells me that the average true range on the day that the signal was fired that true range, or the average true range, was 8 Rand and 19 cents. So Aspen fired a buy signal at 187 Rand. The average true range at that time was 8 Rand 19 cents. Multiply that by 3, it gives me 24 Rand and 57 cents stop loss on the stock. Now what's happened here is the red line is the ATR stop. It's at 264 Rand 43 cents, and we can see it is out of the way of both support levels. So we've got the shorter term support level over there, longer term support level over there, and what this does, if you trail your ATR, let's say once a week, if, this, you know, if the stock is going in your direction, you're in for the longer term because you're holding physicals, you can do ATR stops every every week. So you can calculate every Saturday morning what the ATR would be, calculate the new stop loss so you can trail it that way, all right, or you can take the ATR at any consolidation period. Uh, the tighter the price range, the closer the ATR will be. Remember, it's the average range, which is the difference between the high and the low price. So the closer the highs and lows are to each other, the smaller the range, the smaller your average true range would be. Uh, we can see, again, it's well out of the way, and uh, the thinking says that if the share's average range is 8 Rand, it's unlikely that it's going to go three times that within the next day or five. Uh, the idea is that we can then hold it a little bit longer. All right, so it requires a little bit of calculation. Uh, if you have software that does have a tr an average true range uh, indicator in it, then it's much easier you just take the value of that indicator at the time your signal fires, tells you what the true range is, multiply that by three, you'll get a number, subtract that from your buying price, uh, you can use your entry price which is best or you could use a range price to determine where the stop should be and it's well out of the way. When it comes to share CFDs, uh, I use one and a half times average true range, and the reason is just simply risk. You've leveraged yourself, your, you know, the money down is worth a lot more in the market than what your margin is, changes the percentages and the structure of the trades. Uh, so on the same trade, a one and a half times ATR applied to the same entry price as one, of 187 gives me 8 Rand 19 cents true range multiplied by one and a half gives me a stop loss of minus 12 Rand 28 cents. The red line is that 12 Rand 28 subtracted from the entry price of 287 and generally leveraged trades do have smaller stops. Uh, if, if I'm trading with leverage, I'm trading shorter term. If I'm trading shorter term, I don't necessarily want to have my stop so deep where my loss can end up being you know, four or five times the actual margin requirement. I think the general idea is to keep your stop loss uh, a bit better than margin down or around about whatever your margin requirement is. So average true range multiplied by one and a half K 
can be used on shared CFDs. I did some pros and cons just to, to try and help you guys get an idea of, of what I'm getting at with the presentation. A single moving average as a stop loss minimizes drawdowns. In other words, I don't go from a 10% profit to a minus 5% profit by using a single moving average. It doesn't work like that. The market, especially if that moving average is close like the 15 EMA, uh, the price generally will stay above that in a trendy mode and I'm happy to be long as long as the market stays in my favor. When the price closes below the 15 EMA, generally speaking, you wouldn't have given, a lot, given away a lot in percentage terms. The downside of the single moving average is simply that you, you can be out very early. Uh, we saw there in the first uh, slide, market was running up on the J200 and we had three stops. That is the price you pay for minimizing drawdown. And it doesn't really matter how you apply a stop. It doesn't matter how you apply a trailing stop. The tighter the stop, the less the drawdown, the more often you're going to trade. If I use two moving average crossover system, the upside is you can catch quite a large trend or you can get really good direction if you're trading short term. The downside of, of two moving averages crossing over is that the stop can be very deep and cause major drawdown. If we have a look at uh, you know, some of the stocks who where the market turned in 2008, if you applied at 2189, uh, on some of those shares you actually gave away close to 40% waiting for the 21 to cross down through an 89 EMA. The fact that the market had already, those particular shares might have gone up 200 or 300% prior to that is almost irrelevant because it's 40% from the highest price. So you, you're giving away nearly half of your gain. If the gain was 200%, you're only banking now 120, 130%, uh, which uh, is a bit painful if you've held that stock for three years uh, and within sort of four months, you're giving away half of it. So two moving averages crossing over, if they're really longer term averages like 2189 or maybe 50 and 100, they're going to catch a lot of the trend, but they cross over long after the trend has matured. So just be aware of that. Average true range, the upside is it's purely mathematical and unique to you. Uh, it's highly unlikely that there's going to be you know, 50 other traders with exactly the same stop loss value. Uh, what happens when it comes to support as a stop loss, you get a lot of orders building up at that support level. It can give you a false stop. If your ATR is beyond that support level, it is generally unique. Uh, the, the downside, of course, is low volatility can cause tight stops and induces overtrading, while high volatility can cause very large stops and minimizes the position size. So if you are using your stop to calculate your position size, a deep average true range stop is going to reduce the number of shares that you get. Uh, and it, again, depends really on how you're entering the trade. Um, to use ATR just as a, as you know, you decide you want to buy it for whatever reason, to apply ATR as a stop, make sure that it makes sense as well. Uh, don't just apply that straightforward price value. It's okay, well, you know, if it, if it goes below 23 and 50, I'm out of there. Make sure that it makes sense to the trade and the position size as well. If you're trading long-term trends, ATR can be a really great way to stay in that trend. If you're trying to trade really short-term and your gains, you're looking for 3 to 5%, average true range is normally too big a stop loss uh, and throws out your, your risk-reward ratio. So you can have a great hit rate, but your risk-reward ratio goes out the window if the market goes against you immediately after entry. So do be aware, ATR is a great way to do it, but generally it's used on longer term. Even if you are leveraged, uh, you might want to be in the trade three to six months, then ATR can be a great way to trail your stop up and uh, keep you in the trade. But if you are trading for really short term stuff, then ATR goes out the window, which is why we don't apply it to, well, I don't apply it to indices, currencies, and so on. The, I, I'm going to make a suggestion. Um, we can combine all three techniques into multiple stop loss strategy. Now, it might sound like higher grade, but if you understand averages, 
all you need to do is, is work on the average true range side of things. So what I have done in the past is apply average true range as the initial stop. So let's say the 2150 cross up, give me a buy signal, I immediately apply ATR as a stop. If the market goes through the ATR stop, I close the whole position. Once this trade starts to work for me, I can use the single moving average for a partial exit. So if we go back to the J200, the market's been going up nicely. Let's say it's gone up for a month and it pulls back below the 15 EMA, simply close off half the position. And then as a final exit, we can use two moving averages crossing over to get us out of the trade entirely. Uh, and what this does is guarantee us profits. Now, when you sit down and actually do your, your hit rate and your, your money management calculations, uh, your hit rates, your risk reward ratios, if you apply these three things, you can often get that last part of the trade really pushing your, your risk reward ratio. Uh, the goal is not to have the whole position in all the way to the end. The goal is to make money. And if I can take a partial exit somewhere along the trend, I'm quite happy to then leave the balance to carry on moving. Uh, and one of the reasons is emotion. When a trade gets to a point of, of 20 or 30% up and you leveraged, you start to get really nervous of, of that 300% suddenly becoming 150% again. If you can take off half your trade when the price closes below a single moving average, the emotional impact of the actual cash value of the trade is reduced by 50%. So my suggestion is just simply try and apply all three of them um, and that will generally keep you out of trouble. And then I'm going to make a recommendation. Take your historical trades and go and apply the three systems we looked at today. Uh, look at the trades, find out which system or whether a combination would have served best. Every single stock has its own personality, but a trend is a trend is a trend is a trend, no matter which market you look at. Go and have a look at some of those historical trades where maybe you stopped out a little bit too soon. Uh, the market gave you a buy signal, you entered the trade. Uh, Aspen's one of my favorite shares to hate trading. Simply every time I buy it, it stops me out before it goes in my direction. I've now switched to an ATR to reduce that problem. So after three Aspen trades stopping me out, I decided to then apply ATR on the CFD side and try and stay in the trade a little bit longer and get away from a support line uh, stop loss. So go through the history, apply the three systems. If you had taken an ATR as a stop, most likely you would have been well out of the way of the market, but it wouldn't be so big as to damage your risk reward ratio. Then you can have a look at taking partial profits when the price closed below a shorter period moving average and taking final profit when two moving averages crossed over. Uh, when it comes to leverage, that third option might not be there. To wait for a 2189 to cross so you could hold that for two or three years, uh, incurring interest and all the rest of it. But certainly on your physicals, you can look at, uh, at two moving averages crossing over. Your option when it comes to shorter term trading is use shorter term moving averages. Go and have a look at a 10 and 20 crossing over. They will catch nice short-term trades. Uh, when the price closes below the 10 or below the 20, you take your first stop. When the 10 crosses below the 20, you take the whole trade off. And capital preservation is the only way to make money trading or investing. And that includes holding on to profits. Once you have a profit, it should be included in any new money management calculation. Now, normally speaking, personally, I, once a month, I'll go and have a look at my account and say, all right, the account's balance has changed by this much. That changes the, the position size. If I exclude profit, which is a very common error that I come across, uh, guys will say to me, Ach, it doesn't matter if I lose that 10 grand because it's profit anyway. Uh, well, exactly that. It is profit, and it should be looked after just as much as you look after your original capital investment. It's no good that you invest 50,000 Rand and five years later you've still got 50,000 Rand because the rest of the losses were just profits. Uh, I hope you found this informative. You are welcome to contact me with any questions in regard to the presentation.
Uh, stop losses can be quite challenging and especially average to range. So please guys feel free to contact me. Uh, there are all my contact details. Thanks, Thanks Lauren. Over to you. Yeah, stop losses are designed to taunt us, but as traders, we, we absolutely 100% need them. I particularly like the point, uh, I like to scale out as well. Um, in, in much of my trading, as it goes in my way, I'm, I'm, I'm taking some of the profits off the table. It, it, it makes me rest easier, particularly when you start getting into, into large profit positions. Folks, if you've got questions, uh, drop them into the uh, Q&A box. Uh, question coming through, uh, slightly off topic uh, around uh, Omnitrader. Warren, you do still uh, offer Omnitrader as a as a as a, a charting package. Yes, I do. Okay, perfect. Uh, head yes. across to the website there, the Traders Place. You'll find details. A question aimed at me around uh, my lazy system. The question is simple. Sometimes my and, and today I entered yesterday. My stop is very close. Sometimes it's far away. 100% because I'm using the 15 uh, exponential moving average and the trick there is it, it, it depends if, particularly if, if the market's been going sort of more sideways price and moving average get a lot closer um, and then it, when it goes through because it cuts through and that's my entry the big the big issue is is that my trade size or my risk is always the same because I use my 2% rule so yeah sometimes my stop like yesterday was fairly close so my trade is bigger but my risk remains the same because of of uh two percent rule uh warren a question coming through and and and, and i I'll, I'll throw it to you first and i'll take some of it um using moving averages do you have a preference for weighted simple or exponential <laughs> uh in the beginning i spent a lot of time looking at the different ones i just decided on emas they move slightly quicker than simples uh and they pretty widely used so a lot of people are looking at them and once your skill gets up there, you can read what other people are reading into the EMAs. So I don't think it really matters. Pick one that you like the look of. Yeah, I, I, that's my answer exactly. I, I remember spending weeks looking at the difference between simple weighted and exponential. And I settled on exponential. Uh, I, I liked it. It's a little bit quicker. And also because it's exponential, it gives more value to yesterday than the day before and more value than to the day before. And that just makes sense to me because, well, we, we remember yesterday better than the day before or the month before or something like that. Now, I ask you what you had lunch for yesterday. We know it. If I ask you last month, uh, you probably had lunch, but you probably don't quite remember exactly uh, what it was. Ladies and gents, I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. Uh, we will park it there. Warren, really appreciate stop loss. Uh, never an easy topic, but a critical topic. And, and, and folks, it is, as I said, stop losses are uh, absolutely critically important. Uh, okay, question coming through. Um, Graham's asking, is uh, info, info data required along with Omnitrader? Okay, I think I understand with you. Uh, Graham, you're saying Omnitrader or, or, or Omnitrader. Uh, you do need data. You're always going to need a data source somewhere. Um, and it would be, you actually can hack the standard online share trading. But if you're interested in, 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 Omni, in, in, in uh, Omnitrader or any of the others, uh, drop Warren a shot for Omnitrader. But you do need to get data, particularly if you're with Ami, uh, Ami Broker. The data is separate to it. Uh, ladies and gents, thanks very much for your time. Uh, Warren, thanks very much. Um, uh, okay, question coming through. Let's take it quickly. Warren, aimed at you, would you so throw some light on why you use trailing rather than a fixed stop? Uh, yeah, guarantee capital. Uh, yeah, sorry, guarantee capital growth. Yeah. So every... Yeah, as the price goes in my favor, I want to hold on to as much of it as I possibly can without strangling the trade. So mm -hmm. I just find a way to, to trail the stop um, and guarantee myself a profit if the trade goes in my direction. Obviously, uh, I do. you should create some minimum criteria. Mm -hmm. The price has to go so far in my favor before I start the trail. Otherwise, you end up strangling the trade before it actually is taken off. And uh, it, but yeah, I, I like to... Yeah, I, I, I concur. I, I use trailing in everything I do. And, but even when I did use a fixed stop, which I've moved away from, I would still move that fixed stop from time to time. You certainly don't want to leave it back in the day where, where it was way back when. Uh, James, you're asking, what about a 30 moving average on a weekly chart? So I use that in my very, very lazy system. Um, but I'm trading ungeared. I, I trade the ETS. And it, I mean, it's, for example, kept me in the... Indy 25, I've been in that trade since I think late 2011 
was it 2012? I can't remember now. I've been in that trade for years and years and years. Um, and I used the 30 MA. Certainly with gearing, that might hurt. Or I'm not sure if you've got a comment on a 30 MA on a weekly chart. No, I fully agree with you. If, it, if something takes off, then you want to stay in it, uh, especially if you look at the indie. Uh, the downside, of course, is if you look at individual stocks, they don't tend to, to trend as nicely, apart from CML, of course, <laughs> uh, and, a, and a few others. But in general, stocks don't behave that way. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but if you're trading ETFs, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I trade indices particularly because when they when they catch a trend, man, that trend can go crazy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm early days in, in a Finney, a mid cap, and a, and a Resi trade, and they're all in the money by a little bit. But that indie trade is 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 approaching, if I recall correctly, 300% or something insane, um, and, and certainly works incredibly well uh, with an index in that space. Uh, Warren, really appreciate your time, ladies and gents. Uh, thanks very much. Video will be up, uh, let's say, early evening uh, today. Uh, and we'll catch you all again sometime. All the best. Thanks. Cheers. Awesome. Thanks, Simon. Cheers. This webinar is proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today.